dance started for me when I was two and a half years old. Middle two and a half year old Prima would always be found in front of the ballet studio, just like haunted in front of the window, just like staring at the kids in like pink uh, little tops and skirts, just like enjoying dancing to like beautiful music. And when I was old enough, I was three, my mom enrolled me into ballet class. And I was never really that good to begin with, I don't think. It took a lot of effort for me to begin. Uh, but um, I really learned to embrace the difficulties of ballet. Because I really loved ballet. It was so... The allure of ballet, I guess. Like, how graceful it is and the image of like being on the point with like choo choos and crowns and everything. It's like a little girl's dream. It's so gorgeous, so elegant, so graceful. And it was like um I don't know, it was the depiction of beauty, I guess. You know, like what I wanted to encapsulate as a adult. I don't know, those all those qualities. Femininity and everything I guess. And we also had the opportunity to go to competitions and festivals abroad. And I think that was when it became, um, when I became more independent from my family because I went with the school without my parents. And I really liked the traveling aspect and the teamwork aspect of um, helping each other get ready and like, cheering people on and being supportive whilst being competitive and everything but like it was just a really fun time in my life and um, yeah I had to work really hard for ballet because dance was just something that didn't come so naturally for me when compared to schoolwork because I feel like it required more of me than just hard work like it it's dependent on your um, existing capacities, your physical limits, and um, stuff like that. And I didn't really have like, long legs or like perfect turnout on my feet or stuff like that, which would have really helped me. Also, like I don't think my coordination was like naturally great. But what I did have was my musicality, which. I developed from piano and violin at a young age, I guess. I don't know, maybe. And my love and my determination, I guess. So like, I kept on fighting and I gained a lot of admiration from the younger kids in my dance studio. And I think that was kind of a driving force because when you're um, when people are inspired by you, you feel a sense of obligation to um, to withhold that image they have of you. To keep on inspiring them. I, I didn't want to disappoint them. So as life went on, when I was 16 years old, I, um, I was at the age where I could start to audition for ballet schools. And my mom was the one who encouraged me by informing me that it is a possibility for me to apply for ballet schools and why not try some schools from England because I've always wanted to go to England and everything. And so I looked up the information of all the material that I was supposed to provide and then my brother helped me to film my audition material and my teacher was making the class for me and yeah so a lot of people were involved in the making and a lot of people were involved in the process of me doing the audition and I sent to four schools in total and for the first three schools that I received an answer from they were all rejections. So by the time the last one arrived, and uh, it was a positive one. I was just super, super excited. It was, 
it felt like a miracle and I don't know like from how negative it was going to get a positive it was like so much um, more pronounced and yeah that was that was a really happy moment <laughs> So anyways, I moved to London when I was 16 and life was really, really tough in a real ballet school because as I said, I didn't really have the facilities for ballet and there was so much that I had to work on and change like my technique and everything like my posture was wrong and the habits that I have been um, developing since a young age, I had to change within like the three years and it was just really difficult for me to gain the approval of my teachers and stuff. And in my final year, my the ballet mistress never paid any attention to me. And it was really disheartening. Like she, she never looked in my direction. I never got any corrections or anything. And like back in Thailand, I was I was admired by the younger kids. My teachers were using me as an example for like, um, look, she worked so hard and um, they were like talking me up and everything and from that to come into this of like being ignored and everything, it was so hard and <laughs> it, it was really like a test of my, um, of my determination, I guess, like I kept wanting to work to show that like, to, to show my body mistress, so look, I can do it, like, please pay attention to me. And it never happened, but it kept me going. Like I, I never gave up and um, I'm so proud of myself for that actually. It was during this time in my third and final year of ballet school, which I made the realization that perhaps a career path in a purely classical ballet um, company was not a possible option for me. And I was really heartbroken initially because throughout my entire life I really set my heart upon becoming a prima ballerina to fit my name. But um, all was not blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but all was not lost because I also discovered that I had the possibility to do contemporary well. Like it, it was more so than I thought. And as time's going by and I'm gradually transferring my love for ballet into contemporary, I'm really appreciating how much freer I'm able to dance. Like the freedom of movement, which is not constricted by the discipline of ballet. And also the freedom of expression in a more complex, abstract, way I guess yeah but in any case um, even if it's not uh, attainable for me to aim to become a prima ballerina that doesn't necessarily mean that I have to give up on ballet completely because I'm, I'm still training in ballet every day and so I'm, I'm really not deterred from working harder and progressing and um, Ultimately, I just want to be the best Prima, the best version of Prima in ballet and I'm just gonna do what I can to make ballet and point shoes work for me in some ways. And yeah, I, I, I don't think that's gonna stop anytime soon. I'm, I'm really determined to just keep on working and ballet is always gonna be a big part of my life. I feel like life as a dancer has taught me so many valuable life lessons. The first thing being um, getting used to rejection because it, it really is such an inevitable thing to experience rejection when you're a dancer or I suppose in all kinds of the performance industry where you have to put yourself out there for auditions and stuff. Of course, there are criteria that they have to go through in order to go through the selection processes, but um, it, it's very subjective and uh, 
and the result from one audition can really defer to another. And the rejection begins even before an audition process. You, you sometimes, your application gets rejected or you get through and then you get invited to the audition and then you do bar work and then they cut you or maybe you pass the, or maybe you pass the whole class and then they cut you then or you get to do a repertoire and then they cut you or you go on until the end and then they cut you just before the interview or you do do the interview and then they cut you no they don't cut you anymore <laughs> like, so you do the interview and then you get rejected one week later when you receive the email with the results and even when you do get the job there's the feeling of there's there's always that chance of not being casted for pieces and it can be really um, detrimental to your confidence like for sure i think i do struggle with confidence issues but i just have to remember that i should always measure my progress i guess myself like i try my hardest to do that because i feel like that's the most realistic way to go with it because everyone has different abilities and there's always going to be someone who's better than you in one way or the other. And so the only way to feel good about yourself is to um, to realize that you are making progress, I guess. <laughs> but it is just an impossible thing when it comes to dance to not compare yourself to others because say for instance in an audition if they're picking between two dancers, it's a direct comparison between the two. Or if you're learning the same choreography, there's always gonna be that thing where they're like taking an example from one of the persons and being like, they're better than everyone else, so like everyone please do the same thing. I mean, they don't say that of course, but like basically that's how you receive it. <laughs> And um, so yeah, you, you have to really develop a thick skin <laughs> and, and not be afraid of rejections. You also have to learn to put yourself out there, like uh, it's, it's the only way you're gonna receive opportunities and be seen and stuff. Because I, I do feel like a lot of the times I am not seen and I do struggle to Put myself out there. Also, one of the other things that is required of us is to be comfortable stepping out of our comfort zones because as I am progressing further into my career and the work is becoming more demanding, it's, um, it's really difficult and the movement it's not always going to come so naturally, especially when you're working with new choreographers who you're not used to their style and stuff, and you, you have literally no time to adjust yourself into their choreography, and so you, you just really have to throw everything into it if you want to be used and stuff. And I do struggle with that. I really struggle to... I really struggle to commit fully when I am not completely confident with what I'm doing. And so basically that's uh, my entire dance career <laughs> because because you're <laughs> it's always going to be a challenge and everything that's new is not going to be within your comfort zone. And so I just have to learn to come to terms with the uneasiness of not feeling comfortable and confident, I guess. Yeah, I, I, I am working towards that. I am taking baby steps towards that. And whilst doing so, I'm also trying to not lose motivation and drive to keep on working. <laughs> yeah.
basically. But um, dance is really hard, and I love to dance, but sometimes it's just really, really difficult mentally, physically. Like you can see, I'm getting all these bruises <laughs> on a regular basis. I don't even know when and where and how I got them from, but yeah, that is the life of a dancer. <laughs> people from around the world and see the latest videos, follow Citizens of Seoul.